On the 4th of July, 1946, a staggering 200,000 spectators gathered in Gdansk, drawn to witness the momentous executions of former guards from the Stutthof concentration camp. Atop a hill, a group of women emerged, destined for the looming gallows, where their lives would be forfeited. Convicted of crimes against humanity, these women represented some of the most sinister figures among the female guards affiliated with the SS in the concentration camp system. Following a war crimes trial, they were unmistakably identified as violent perpetrators, women who reveled in cruelty and were complicit in torture and execution. In this narrative, we delve into the chilling accounts of the executions, spotlighting the individual histories of these female guards, each notorious for their brutality and malevolence. Join us today as we unravel the haunting saga of the executions that marked the end of their reign at Stutthof concentration camp. Stutthof was the first concentration camp set up outside German borders. Emerging immediately after the Nazi invasion of Poland, the camp was initially established with a prisoner workforce tasked to construct the very facilities that would imprison them. But by 1944, with Allied armies closing in on Germany, a dramatic shift occurred as the inmate population at Stutthof surged, particularly with the arrival of approximately 24,000 Jewish prisoners transferred from major camps like Auschwitz. In response to this influx, a fresh contingent of guards was dispatched to manage the escalating numbers, some specifically recruited from the local area. As the war raged in 1944, it was becoming clear the Germans were losing. During this time, the guards demanded even more productivity from the prisoners, and unrestrained cruelty became common. Conditions within Stutthof became unbearable, marked by extreme harshness that claimed the lives of thousands through starvation and rampant diseases, including devastating epidemics like typhus. The camp witnessed daily executions, carried out within the firing range, gas chambers, and even mud-soaked atrocities where some inmates were drowned or fatally clubbed by guards. The toll on life in Stutthof was staggering, with an estimated 65,000 individuals meeting their demise, many succumbing to forced labor. Amidst this grim landscape, one woman found herself drafted to work at the camp. Iwa Paradis, born on December 17, 1920, in Lehmburg in the Weimar Republic, remains a haunting figure in the history of Stutthof. Little is known about her early life, but she emerged as a fervent Nazi, undergoing training at Stutthof in August 1944 to become an overseer of the women's camp. Iwa developed a notorious reputation for her brutality. She was known for beating prisoners with whips and other weapons. Witnesses recounted instances of her ordering female prisoners to undress in freezing winter conditions dousing them with ice-cold water and beating them if they moved. The guards would often chastise entire barracks for minor infractions. Such brutal punishments were sadly commonplace in concentration camps. Paradies was briefly transferred to the Bromberg subcamp before returning to Stutthof. As Allied forces approached in April 1945, she became part of the mass prisoner death marches out of Stutthof. Captured after attempting to hide, she faced judgment during the Stutthof trials, where she was sentenced to death. On July 4, 1946, at the age of 25, Iwa Paradis met her fate on the gallows erected at Gdansk. Alongside ten other former guards, including Johann Pohl, the former commandant, and Jenny Wanda Barkman, she was executed in front of a crowd of 20,000 spectators. Precisely at 5 p.m., 11 open trucks rolled in, transporting the prisoners to the execution ground. Hands and legs bound with cords, six men and five women stood on the platforms of each truck. Positioned under the gallows, the condemned were made to stand on tailboards or chairs. Former Stutthof prisoners, dressed in striped uniforms, volunteered as executioners, placing simple cord nooses around the convicts' necks. The means of hanging was known as the short drop method. This meant that as the trucks drove forward, the criminal's body wouldn't drop from too high of a height which meant that the nooses wouldn't break their necks, but instead would slowly strangle them, resulting in a much slower, more torturous death. Iwa Paradis became the final convict to meet her fate, marking the culmination of the grim executions. Born on May 30, 1922 in Hamburg, Jenny Wanda Barkman's early life reflected a modest upbringing under her father, a dock worker. Despite financial challenges, her childhood was relatively normal. Initially aspiring to be an actress, she later tried her hand at fashion modeling, gaining recognition for her good looks. With the outbreak of World War II, 
Barkman continued her involvement in photo shoots and advertising agencies. However, in early 1944, a pivotal shift occurred in Barkman's life. She abandoned her modeling career and responded to a German SS advertisement seeking women to work in concentration camps. At 21, Barkman, perhaps enticed by financial gains or the prospect of career advancement, underwent an interview and training to become an overseer in Stutthof concentration camp. Barkman's arrival marked a disturbing turn as her innate cruelty and sadism manifested. Known for beating inmates mercilessly, she displayed a propensity for violence, often sending prisoners to the gas chambers after torturing them. As she became infamously known as Mad Jenny and the Beautiful Spectre, Barkman participated in daily selections leading inmates to the gas chambers. As World War II neared its end, Barkman attempted to evade justice as the Soviet Red Army approached. Despite becoming one of the most hunted war criminals, she managed to elude capture for a brief period. In May 1945, while attempting to board a train in Gdansk, Barkman was arrested. Her identity had been preserved in the camp records, leading to her eventual capture. During her trial at the Stutthof trials, dozens of prisoners testified against Barkman, presenting documents that depicted her atrocities. Despite efforts to claim insanity, she displayed no signs of mental instability during the trial. Barkman, mostly concerned with her appearance, changed her hairstyle daily, flirted with guards, and laughed in the face of witnesses. Ultimately, she was sentenced to death. On July 4, 1946, at the age of 24, Jenny Wanda Barkman faced execution on the Biskupia Gorka Hill near Gdansk. The beautiful spectre met her end calmly. After being convicted, she remarked, Life is really a great pleasure, and pleasure as a rule does not last long. In the shadow of the gallows, Jenny Wanda Barkman's dark chapter closed, marking the demise of a young woman whose initial dreams of modeling and acting gave way to a brutal existence, wielding power and perpetuating violence in one of the darkest periods of history. The motives that propelled her into the realm dominated by the evil of the SS remain a mystery to this day. Wanda Klaff, previously known as Wanda Kalashinsky, underwent a notable transformation after finishing school in 1938. Initially working in a jam factory until 1942, her life took a different turn when she married Willie Claff that same year, transitioning into the roles of a housewife and later a tram conductor. However, in 1944, her path changed dramatically when she became a guard in Proust, a subcamp of Stutthof where her brutal treatment of prisoners became notorious. Claff's infamy grew as she ruthlessly beat and kicked prisoners without reason until they lay still, often resorting to drowning female inmates in mud or clubbing them to death when in a particularly bad mood. In January 1945, the evacuation of prisoners from the Stutthof camp system in northern Poland commenced. As the final evacuation unfolded, nearly 50,000 prisoners, predominantly Jews, comprised the overwhelming majority of the Stutthof camp system. Approximately 5,000 prisoners from Stutthof subcamps were compelled to march to the Baltic Sea coast, where they faced the grim fate of being forced into the icy water and machine gunned. The remaining prisoners were directed toward Lauenburg in eastern Germany. However, as advancing Soviet forces cut off their path, the Germans ruthlessly forced the surviving prisoners back to Stutthof. Marching in severe winter conditions under brutal treatment by SS guards, thousands succumbed during this harrowing journey. In late April 1945, the remaining prisoners faced removal from Stutthof by sea due to its complete encirclement by Soviet forces. Once again, Hundreds of prisoners were forcibly pushed into the sea and shot. The toll of this evacuation was staggering, with an estimated 25,000 prisoners or one in two losing their lives. Upon the liberation of Stutthof by Soviet forces on May 9, 1945, only around 100 prisoners were found, having managed to hide during the camp's final evacuation. Wanda Klaff managed to escape from the camp in early 1945, but was apprehended at her parents' home in June of the same year. Falling ill from typhoid fever in prison, she faced trial at the first Stutthof trial, beginning on April 25, 1946. During the proceedings, Klaff proclaimed, I am very intelligent and I was very devoted to my work in the camps. I struck at least two prisoners every day. Despite her assertion, the trial concluded on May 31st, sentencing Wanda Klaff to death by hanging. 
In the solemn aftermath of the trials and executions, a chilling narrative of human cruelty unfolds. From Iwa parodies to Wanda Klaff, justice confronted the perpetrators, leaving behind a haunting legacy. May the memory of their victims endure, urging humanity to confront the shadows of its past for a more compassionate future.